In our lesson today, we're going to be looking at two types of compounds. And so I'll go ahead and uh, put those two up on the screen here. The first type will be called covalent compounds. Sometimes they're called molecular compounds. And these are formed by combining two nonmetals in a covalent bond. And so the key here will be two nonmetals and of course covalent bonds. So in the last lecture, we learned that covalent bonds are formed by two nonmetals uh, being joined together, sharing electrons. The other type of compound is called ionic compounds. And as you can guess, these are formed from an ionic bond. And so I'm going to underline that. It's a key part of this. And they're formed by combining two ions. And so we say a cation and an anion. And usually that involves combining a metal and a nonmetal. So I'm going to write that on here too. And so if we see a metal and a nonmetal, that's a good sign it's going to be an ionic compound. Now, we also know that if we take these, uh, these uh, compounds and we divide them down into their smallest possible unit, you have, for example, in the case of a covalent compound, it's called a molecule. You might remember that uh, if we take an element, and this is something we learned in an earlier chapter, if we take an element and we uh, divide it down to its smallest possible unit, well, the smallest unit of an element that still re re retains the properties of that element is called, as you might recall, an atom. And so that was a, a word we, we used and, and have learned quite a bit about. But here we're talking about compounds. And so uh, we talk about molecules in covalent compounds. The smallest unit of a covalent compound is a molecule. And if you have an ionic compound, these are not called molecules. We don't say that, uh, for example, salt, being an ionic compound, has a molecule. We say it has formula units. And so these are just vocabulary words that we're going to uh, be using throughout this uh, series of lectures. And so for covalent compounds, molecules. For ionic compounds, the word is formula unit. Now today, we're going to be focusing on covalent compounds. And so this is what our lecture will be about uh, in this in this video. So let's first of all take a look at this covalent compound. As you can see, it is covalent. Nitrogen and oxygen are both nonmetals, and so we can name this as a covalent or a molecular compound. And the way we do that is we take the number 2 and we put a prefix. The prefix for 2 is di, and we say di nitrogen since we have two nitrogens. And then five, we use a prefix for five. Uh, that I believe that a pent or a penta would be a, an, uh, the prefix that you'd use for that. And we take the, the second element and we change its ending to ide. So oxygen is going to become oxide. And so we call that part of it pentoxide. And so the name for this formula, or for this compound, is dinitrogen pentoxide, N2O5. And so, once again, in review, we take uh, the first element and the uh, numerical prefix that uh, represents it. We write that out. And then for the second element, we do the same thing, except we change its ending to IDE. So, for example, fluorine would become fluoride. You've possibly heard of that ion before. Uh, how about nitrogen? Well, if it's the second element, we would change it to nitride. If it were sulfur, we would change it to sulfide, if it were the second element in a covalent compound, and so forth. Now, you might be wondering, what are the prefixes? We know that uh, 2 is di and 5 is uh, pent. Well, here are the prefixes for 1 through 10. You've probably heard of most of these, although a few of them might be new to you. 1 is mono, 2 is di, 3 is tri, 4 is tetra. That might be 
a new one for you. Five is Penta. Six is Hexa. Seven is Hepta. Eight is Octa, as in an octagon. You've heard of that before. Nine is Nana. And ten is Deca. And so are the, those are the numerical prefixes for writing uh, the names of covalent compounds. Well, let's try a few examples here today. The first one we have is P4O6. And so we take the four, and what's the prefix for four? Hopefully you remember that it is tetra. So that would be tetra, and P is the symbol for phosphorus. And then six, the prefix for six is hexa. And then O is oxygen, but remember the second element, we always change its ending to IDE, so it becomes oxide. And so here we have tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. Now you might try to say that and notice that it's a little bit difficult to pronounce. Um, generally speaking, if we ever have a case where there's an A next to an O, we just drop the A. So instead of calling this hexaoxide, we, uh, we actually call this, if I can erase here, we actually just call that hexoxide. Let me erase that and make it look a little bit better. So we're tetraphosphorus hexoxide. Now another case where you would do this is if you ever had two O's next to each other. In, in that case you would drop one of the O's. And so once again you have an A next to an O, drop the A, O next to another O, drop the, the second or the one of the O's. Here's another one that you probably all know the name of. CO2 is carbon dioxide. And that's correct. Now if you look at the name for that, you might be wondering, you know, the, uh, the first atom, or the, the first element, carbon, has an understood uh, subscript of one. So why don't we call this monocarbon dioxide? And that's a good question. Well, that brings us to another rule in naming these compounds, and that is you never start the name of a covalent compound with mono. Never start the name of a covalent compound with that prefix mono. And so if the first element in a covalent compound has uh, an understood subscript of one, we just leave off the mono. This and it's not there. So it's just carbon dioxide. So that is actually the correct name for CO2. And here's another one that you've probably heard of also. And once again, uh, C is carbon. There's one of them. We, we don't put the mono if it's at the beginning, so it's carbon. And then we have one oxygen, but we change the ending to IDE. So mono and then O makes it oxide, but remember it's not carbon monoxide or carbon monoxide. No, we since there are two O's next to each other, we just uh, drop one of those O's. And so it becomes carbon monoxide. And so that is the correct name for this, carbon monoxide. Let's try a few more examples and see if you uh, have mastered these we have CCl4. Well, C is the symbol for what element? It is carbon. And so there's one of them, but you don't put the mono there. You never start the name of a compound with mono. So it's just carbon. And now we have four chlorines. What's the prefix for four? That would be tetra. And then Cl is chlorine, but we change its ending to IDE, so it's carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride, a, a fairly common uh, compound used in organic chemistry. Here's another one. 
into S4. So here we have two uh, nitrogens. So that would be di nitrogen. And then we have four sulfur atoms. So four is tetra. And then S is sulfur, but we change its ending to IDE, so that becomes sulfide. Dinitrogen tetrasulfide. Here's another one, NO2. One nitrogen, do we say mononitrogen? No, because we never start the name of a covalent compound with mono, so it's just nitrogen. And then the prefix for two is di, and then O would be oxide. Always change that second element's ending to IDE, nitrogen dioxide. Here's another one. B, Br3, one boron atom, but we don't say monoboron, we just say boron. Never start the name of a compound with mono. And then three, the prefix for three is tri, like a tricycle, three wheels. And then Br is bromine, but we change its ending to IDE, so it becomes tribromide. Boron tribromide. Let's do one more. O2, F2. Well, we have two oxygens, so that becomes di, is it dioxide? No, we only change the, the ending of the second or the last element to IDE, so it's dioxygen. And then two Fs would be difluoride. Dioxygen difluoride. So hopefully you see that uh, it's fairly simple to, uh, to write the names of these covalent or molecular compounds as long as you know those uh, numerical prefixes and remember the simple rules there for changing the uh, ending of the last element to IDE.